Hebrews chapter 11. So that's where we'll begin, Hebrews chapter 11. We'll look at a couple of more verses tonight. Uh, but uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and uh, verse number 6. We're going to look at some practical ways uh, that faith is demonstrated in um, the life of the believer. Okay, and uh, uh, the, but God says, "But without faith, it is impossible to please Him." That is a powerful statement, isn't it? So. We can take from that that God wants us to live by what class, by church? By faith. Yeah, very definitely. Did you know everything inside of us rebels against that? Did you know that? We don't like to have to trust the Lord. <laughs> we prefer instead to trust who? Ourselves. We don't like to have to live by faith because when you when you have when you're living by faith that means you must depend upon whom you must depend upon God. That's what living by faith is is utter total complete reliance and dependence upon God and all oh, the uh the um uh fallen nature, the sin nature within all of us rebels against that. Uh, because when you are living a life in total dependence upon the Lord, upon God, you know, that's really when he is Lord, master, ruler. And we don't like that either because we want to be the master, the ruler, the Lord, if you will, of our own lives. We, we, we want to be very much in control. Um, but, you know, I will say this. We're not in control, even if we think we're in control. And, you know, we like to control circumstances. We like to control situations. We, we just like to be in control, period. But we're not. And occasionally, the Lord will send us a loving reminder. He say, "He say, I'm in control," you know. And He has various ways to do that. So, <clears throat> but here it is. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse number 7. And now we, we will pray. Uh, I've got an <clears throat> urgent prayer request. Brother Mac uh, text me just a little bit before church tonight. And I replied by letting him know we're going to pray about that request. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 5 and uh, verse number 7. Now, uh, to the church, uh, <clears throat> God's word says, for we walk by faith not by, not by sight. See, that's, that's another problem we have. We want to see everything. We want to see how it's all going to work out. Now, what inside of us makes us like that? That we want to be able to see how it's all going to work out every day, every week, every month. We just want to be able to look, set our eyes on it, and see it instead of, rather than, believe, living by faith, trusting God. Oh, it's a battle, folks. It's a battle. 
But, uh, and then, uh, finally, James chapter 2. James chapter number 2. And by the way, Lloyd was out going door to door with me yesterday, a soul winning. But today, Lloyd accepted Jesus as his personal Savior. I mean, how incredible is that? You know, I mean, think about that. Get your mind around that. He's out with me going door to door yesterday. And uh, today, he accepted Jesus as his Savior. So, wow. You just, I mean, the ways of God are past finding out. Amen. All right. Uh, now, <laughs> James chapter 2, and, uh, and drop down to verse 17, if you would, please. Uh, now, look at this. Uh, Even so, faith, if it hath not works. And so we're going to look at some works this evening, which really are demonstrations of faith. Um, you know, if it, it even so faith, if it hath not works, is what? Well, think about that. It's dead. I mean, where do you go? Where where can you go with that statement? I mean, uh, that's a thought provoker. <clears throat> being alone, being alone. Um, look at verse eighteen. I think God expands, he expounds, he explains. He says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. These are just powerful statements from God's word. Uh, verse 19, uh, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. And then verse 20. Uh, but wilt thou know, O vain man? Uh, the Greek word there is renos, for the word vain, renos. And it means empty, devoid of truth. Wow, that is a uh, very powerful, look at this, O vain man, that faith without works is what? Wow. I mean, God says what he means and he means what he says. And you know what? All that God says, he says in love. Amen? He, he loves, he loves uh, well, for God so loved the world. Um, now, <clears throat> so we're going to look at some practical demonstrations of faith. Um, kind of springboard from these powerful <clears throat> opening uh, statements. So let's look at some demonstrations of faith. Because we know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that faith without works is dead. And uh, we know that we walk by faith. That means trusting, believing God instead of by sight, which means trusting, believing ourselves. Wow, those are powerful statements. Well, uh, let's begin with the uh, practical demonstration of prayer. Yeah, uh, that's one of the works. Uh, that's one of the, the um, that accompanies true faith is prayer. And let's go to Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. We'll also look at uh, Mark, chapter 10. But we'll begin in Matthew, chapter number 9. Again, it's uh, uh, just uh, such a blessing uh, that uh, we can uh, spend this time together with God and His Word. Matthew, chapter 9. And uh, look at uh, <clears throat> just uh, verse 27 through verse 30. Okay. Prayer, 
demonstrates uh, the, uh, the reality of faith in um, a person's life. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 9 and verse 27. And uh, when Jesus departed thence, two men followed him crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. Now, <laughs> these two men are praying. You know, that's prayer is talking to Jesus. And that's what they're doing. The, the, the difference is they can visually see Jesus. He's right there. Well, no, they, actually, they can't see him. Uh, they can't see him, but he's there. He's right there in close proximity to them. And let's look at, uh, let's look at their prayer a little more in depth. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And uh, Jesus saith unto them, watch this, believe ye, believe ye that I am able to do this? And their response, they said unto him, Yea, Lord. Um, you know, uh, I don't know about this illustration, but it comes to mind um, in my vehicle. Um, <clears throat> my um, something is broken that makes the door locks work, and. Uh, so what does that mean? It means uh, it's called an actuator. And uh, it, it's broken. And so the automatic door locks, you know, you can touch that button as many times as you want to, and nothing's going to happen. And so what is the actuator that prompts God to... Um, to work, it's, it's faith. It's faith, church. Isn't it interesting that the first question from Jesus to those two blind men, believe ye that I am able to do this? And by the way, that's his question to you and I as we meet with the, uh, as we meet with all of the issues of life. If he asked these two men 2,000 years ago, you know what? He hasn't changed. Jesus Christ, the same uh, yesterday, uh, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, yea, Lord. Then, then, verse 29, touched he their eyes saying, look at this now, according to your, wow, according to your what? Faith. Your faith. Be it unto you. And by the way, a lot of people will say, they'll say, they'll speak words. Do you think, if, do you think the Lord can go beneath the surface? And do you think he knows whether or not they really believe him, have faith in him? I, I certainly do. I certainly think uh, our all-knowing God, he, he knows that these are not just empty words. He knows they believe, and their, uh, their faith has substance. Yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> let's look at another uh, Another uh, demonstration, uh, Mark chapter 10, and uh, Mark 10 and verse number 46. Uh, a lot of people are quitting. A lot of people are giving up. Oh, they're asking God to do something. Um, but uh, 
they still quit and give up. That is not a demonstration of faith. When you genuinely believe, then you don't quit on God. You don't give up. But a lot of people are uh, such a falling away right now. Mark chapter 10, and then uh, drop down to verse 46. And uh, <clears throat> they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples uh, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he had uh, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And incidentally, the other two blind men, when they made their request unto the Lord, they also said, have mercy. <laughs> so, I mean, what do we need to understand about the way they prefaced their prayer request? <laughs> They were saying to the Lord, we're going to ask you for something, and we know we don't deserve it from you. Wow. And folks, that's humility. That's, that's what they're admitting to God. We, we're going to ask you for a blessing, for a healing. We know we don't deserve it. We know we're not worthy of it. And... Um, In verse 48, um, and many charged him, ordered him, commanded him <laughs> that he should hold his peace. You know, stop praying to Jesus. That's really what they're ordering Bartimaeus to do. Stop talking to Jesus. But he cried the more, a great deal. Amen? You know, the public always has an opinion of what they think. But that's not what matters. Faith is what matters. And faith doesn't quit and faith doesn't give up even when it contradicts public opinion. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In verse 49, watch this. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calleth thee. You know what I wonder? If Bartimaeus had listened to the public opinion ordering him to stop praying to Jesus, I wonder if this would be happening now. I think it's a good thing that Bartimaeus kept on calling to Jesus. No matter what those around him thought about it, you know, uh, the peer group pressure that we all face. Um, verse 50. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Wow. The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Now watch the response of Jesus in verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. What made him whole? What made him well? What invited 
the blessing, the healing of God upon his life. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight. And what marvelous testimony does Bartimaeus have after receiving his sight? He followed Jesus in the way. By the way, this is the way. It's right here. This is the way. Um, a lot of people get a blessing from God and they forget all about God and then just go off and do their own thing. Not Bartimaeus. Oh no, no, he, he followed Jesus in the way. Now, uh, <clears throat> so prayer is a demonstration of faith. These men prayed and in both instances, it's very clear they prayed because they had faith. And uh, that faith, I don't know, that prompted God then to act uh, in giving them a blessing. Okay, But uh, another demonstration of faith, let's go to, um, let's go to Hebrews chapter 7, Hebrews chapter number seven and stay with me here uh, and this example comes from the life of Abraham so we'll read in Hebrews uh, chapter seven we'll look at verses four six and seven and then we'll go all the way back to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. But Hebrews chapter 7 and <clears throat> verse number 4. Now consider how great this man was. Uh, referring to Jesus in verse 4. Unto whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils or a tenth part of what Abraham recovered <clears throat> from the thieves. And uh, then verse 6 and 7, uh, but, but he whose descent is not counted from them, uh, that is from the uh, Levitical priesthood, because Christ is not from the Levitical priesthood, he's from the Melchizedek, uh, but he also, but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes of Abraham and blessed him that had the promises. So God gave what to Abraham? The answer is found in verse 6, the last two words. God gave what to Abraham? The promises. The promises. Abraham was living upon the promises of God. That's all he had to go on. And by the way, that's all any child of God has to go on, are God's promises. But, uh, but God blessed him. God blessed him. Well, let's see a little bit more about that. Genesis chapter 14, all the way back to Genesis chapter number 14. Genesis 14 and uh, verse number 18. Nineteen and twenty. All right, Genesis 14, verse 18. And uh, Melchizedek, king of Salem, that would be Jerusalem, uh, city of peace. Um, it's a reference to Christ. He is that peace. There is no peace without Jesus. Uh, brought forth. So Abraham has gone to this battle. He's recovered the stolen property. 
And Melchizedek, king of Salem, um, brought forth, look at this, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. So you have Melchizedek is both king and priest. And and Melchizedek is, in fact, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Jesus that is um, bringing forth to Abraham, the victor in this battle, bread and wine. Hmm. What does that make us think of? Bread and wine. What is the message from Jesus to Abraham these thousands of years ago? What is it that we just, as a church, assembled to do prior before Resurrection Sunday? The Lord's Supper. And... uh, to use the official word, what are the elements of the Lord's Supper? The two, the bread and the juice. The unfermented bread, the unfermented fruit of the vine, the juice. Um, <clears throat> and so the message to Abraham thousands of years ago is the, still the same message to the church today. And uh, Jesus um, is communicating to Abraham the message of his broken body and his shed blood. I mean, listen, the gospel is not a new story. It's the gospel... Uh, <laughs> I think about Abel who brought the uh, blood of the lamb to the altar and, uh, and God accepted Abel's offering because it was uh, the blood, a blood offering. And, and that, of course, uh, represents the shed uh, blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only acceptable offering which atones for our sins. And of course, Abraham, uh, the prophet, would preach. And, and my, what a powerful illustration God would give Abraham about Jesus. Uh, you know the story, and I, I won't, uh, uh, I won't uh, you know, uh, direct uh, to uh, it's uh, Genesis chapter 21, but you know the story, amen? Abraham was commanded by God to do what with his son, his only son? Sacrifice his only son. I mean, the gospel, it's, it's all there. It's, I mean, and you just, if you ask God to open your eyes, here it is. Anyway, and uh, verse 19, um, and he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram. Now, why was Abram blessed? Because Abram believed in Jesus Christ. Abraham believed in the cleansing blood and the broken body and would get a very close up and personal illustration uh, in the sacrifice of his son of even the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And God blessed Abraham then for Christ's sake because Abraham believed. And, you know, uh, Romans, Paul reports, inspired by God, that uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for what? For righteousness. And uh, so... um, It's the same reason God blesses any child of his today. It's not because we deserve it. We are blessed 
And there's only one reason. It's because of you know Jesus Christ. You are his child. I hope you know him. I hope you're his child. But he alone is uh, the one who invites the blessing of God upon uh, the, the, the life of every believer, every child of God. So um, now watch this in verse 20. Um, blessed be the most and blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. So there's thanksgiving being rendered to God for the victory. And Abraham's response, Abraham's, I, I just, I want you to see this class. Abraham's response to the broken body of Christ, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Abraham's response to the gospel and uh, to, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I mean, what is Abraham's response to this, uh, to this uh, uh, amazing message, the saving message of Jesus Christ. Uh, look at it. And he, verse 20, last statement of verse 20, he, Ab Abraham did what? Abraham gave tithes of all. Of, of all that Abraham had, he gave tithe to Jesus. This, this Melchizedek, you... you uh, you study it, and you, you go back to Hebrews chapter 7, you'll soon understand who Melchizedek is. This is, this is a pre-Bethlehem, a Christophany. It's a pre-Bethlehem appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. And Now, by the way, someone would say, well, Abraham's under the Mosaic law. He has to tithe. Because under the law, they were commanded, they were ordered to tithe. I don't know, um, I don't know who would say that because um, this was, now get this, this event occurred 400 years before the law. <laughs> there was no law. And by the way, was Abraham um, was uh, was Abraham saved by the law, or how was Abraham saved? By faith. Abraham was saved by faith, and that and that means grace, grace. So uh, you know, sometimes people uh, on that are putting messages on YouTube uh, that are teaching people that. Tithing is, is not under grace. It's not, uh, you know, uh, well, I guess they don't study their Bible. They don't know their Bible. They don't read the Bible. No, this all happened 400 years before there ever was a law. This was all done under grace, all under grace. Now, however, I will say this was incorporated into the law, but... Uh, hold that thought for just a moment. Now, uh, now I want you to see God's response to Abraham. What Abraham did is he gave to God, he gave a tenth of all that was in his possession. Now I want you to see God's response to Abraham. And this, by the way, this is all by faith. This is all by faith. Okay, this is Abraham demonstrating faith in the matter of giving. <laughs> okay, Look at this, uh, Genesis chapter 24 and verse number 35, if you would please. So Genesis 24 and verse number 35. This is the testimony of Abraham's servant that has gone to find Abraham's son, a wife. And... Uh, Listen to the testimony of Abraham's servant, what he says about Abraham. Verse 35, And the Lord hath blessed my master, what's that next word, class? Greatly. <clears throat> and he has become great. And he hath given him, 
What did God give Abraham? Flocks and herds. And by the way, in that day and time, that was the measure of a man's wealth. It was how big are your flocks, how big are your herds. Um, and, uh, and what else did the Lord? Do you see the word Lord? Are, is it all caps, large capital letters? Capital? That's, that's, that's Yahweh. That's Jehovah. <laughs> and the Lord hath blessed my master. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> silver and gold. By the way, who owns the silver and gold? Who, do, who says emphatically the gold and the silver is mine? It's God. That's God's money. That's God's. And God, this is God's response to the man who tithed unto Jesus following his personal belief in Christ, his acceptance of Jesus Christ, and he demonstrates faith in giving to God. And I just wanted you to see God's response. And men servants and maid servants and camels and asses, and on and on it goes. I mean, <clears throat> um, I do want you to see where tithing was grafted in by God to the law. And so we'll look at uh, the last book, the Old Testament, <clears throat> the book of Malachi now. Malachi chapter, um, look, you know, uh, I, I have no angles here. I just preach the word of God because it, it is the word of God. Uh, and um, <clears throat> people that listen to a misinformed teacher, uh, who does not know their Bible, does not know the Word of God, and uh, who tells them that, you know what, <clears throat> tithing is not of God. <laughs> they really are their own worst enemy. Uh, and I say that lovingly. I say that with all the kindness of God in my heart. Um, they're literally robbing themselves of untold blessings of God. Now, look at this in Malachi 3 and, uh, <clears throat> and verse 8. Uh, and, but you'll see, you'll see God's purpose in this gift of the tithe, what, what it is that God desires to do, or how God desires to have the tithe to be used. <clears throat> um, but look at it, verse 8, will a, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? <laughs> God, you're calling us a bunch of robbers, but tell us how we're robbing you. And God answers, in tithes and offerings. Now, look at verse 9. And that invites what? doesn't invite a blessing. No. no, God says you're cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. That is how prolific the problem was. The whole nation had become God robbers. The whole nation. Think about that. Wow. Uh, look at verse 10. Now, <clears> the <throat> loving, merciful God goes on to say in verse 10, he gives instruction for how to, um, how to get the curse off and get the blessing on. Look at this, verse 9. God says, uh, verse 10, pardon me, verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there, in God's purpose, that there be, may be meat in mine house. God wants that tithe to be used for his work, and his his work is his work is uh, to preach the gospel to every creature. Wow, what a mandate from God, Amen! And so you see God's uh, dedicated purpose for 
the, this gift of the tithe. And, uh, and then look what else God invites everyone to do. Here, look at this. And God says, um, and prove me. What does that mean? And prove me. What is God saying about uh, this matter of tithing? God is saying, you test me. You test me. You return my tithe to me, and you just see what happens. <laughs> That's, that is a literal rendering of what God is uh, matter-of-factly saying to the people. You, and prove me, you test me now, herewith, in this matter of tithing, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not do what, church? Open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And furthermore, verse 11, the promise, the blessing continues. And I will rebuke the who class. And by the way, who is, who is the devourer? The devil. Was it 1 Peter 5, 1 Peter 5, 8? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he whom he may, oh yeah, devour. And what does the word mean? Destroy. Destroy. It's serious. It's serious when God's child is withholding God's tithe. It's serious not uh, because, not because it's money, but it's serious because it's resource that is being withheld from God for the express purpose of fulfilling the great commission of Jesus Christ. It is serious. And God uh, takes it very seriously. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of, the Lord of uh, hosts. All right. Now let's go to Luke, another demonstration. Of that, you know, that's a demonstration of faith and giving. But there's another area in, in Luke. And I want you to see it, Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> another, another demonstration of faith. And remember, faith without works is... God says it's dead. Uh, o vain man, O vain man is another way of saying, O lost man, O unsaved man. I mean, you know, I don't know, somebody said talk is cheap. Somebody, somebody said put your, I don't know where your mouth is. I don't even remember exactly how that statement goes. But uh, look at this. Um, Another area that demonstrates uh, faith is going, is going. Okay, don't, don't rush to any conclusions. Just let me read this, Luke, Luke 5 and verse 1. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him, Jesus, to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Okay. And, uh, and he entered into one of the ships, which was, whose ship was it, class? Simon, you see that apostrophe S, that denotes possession, ownership. Uh, um, I, don't, I didn't even catch where he asked Simon, Simon, may, may I use your ship? I, if it happened, it's not recorded. He, what, what, all I can say, matter of fact, is Jesus. Uh, Jesus just stepped in to Simon's ship. And, uh, 
and prayed him that he would thrust out a little, you know, from the land. And he sat down and taught the people. What did he teach the people? Any, anyone want to venture a guess? What did he teach the people? I, I believe he taught them the word of God. And I believe included in that was the gospel, the saving message of Jesus Christ. Now, when he had left speaking, he finished his message, his lesson. He said unto Simon, I just look at this. You just praise the Lord for this. <laughs> you know, uh, Simon, you know, Simon is a free moral agent. Simon could have said, uh, hey, wh that's my ship. What? You didn't ask me. What makes you think you can use my ship? Can't you see we're busy here? You know, I, no. No, Simon just, uh, he let Jesus use his property. And uh, so Jesus finishes and uh, he says unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. That's a catch. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And it's kind of partial obedience. Did you catch it? It's not, it's not full obedience. Jesus said nets, and Simon said net. You know, so it's kind of like, you know, all right. I really don't want to, but all right, I'll, I'll do this. I'll do it part way, but not all the way. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. There's got to be a lesson there somewhere for not doing God's work God's way, which leads to problems, the net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to sink. Wow. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, just like the blind man, and this is really what he's saying, he's saying, depart from me. For I am a sinful man, O oh Lord. He's saying, I don't deserve this. I am not worthy of this. Um, at, for he was astonished. And all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not. Now watch what Jesus says. Look what he says. From henceforth, thou shalt do what? But you know in another parallel passage, uh, 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 the other gospel writer says it, um, uh, says it, uh, uh, I will make you, what does he say? I will make you fishers of men. Um. I know I'm glad for that promise because I assure you the only one who can make me a fisher of men and the only one who can make you a fisher of men is the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot make yourself a fisher of men, but you know what you can do? You can go to Jesus and you can have a real heart to heart with him and you can say, Lord, I'm presenting myself and I'm asking you to make me a fisher of men. And uh, I believe God is able to do that. And so um, now uh, look at this. Look at this. It's such a step of faith by Peter and the others because look in verse 11. And they demonstrate their faith, and it's recorded in verse 11. And when they had brought their ships to land, what did Peter and the other men do? 
they forsook all and they followed him because he had promised to make them what class? What church? He promised to make them fishers of men. You talk about a step of faith. They believed the promise of God. Now, um, what was the uh, what was the contingency? Um, um, where, where is that other gospel passage? Somebody help me out here. I don't have it in my memory bank right now, but uh, where Jesus says, uh, uh, he says, uh, I will make you fishers of men. Uh, you know, help me out here for a minute, class. This is worth it, I think. And I know that the clock's ticking away, but we're going to make it here. We're going to make it. It's one of the parallel <clears throat> passages. Um, sorry? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And yes, that just sounds right. Let's go over there. See what we see in Matthew 4.19. Who, who got the answer first? Because whoever, ans whoever got the answer first gets the first homemade cinnamon roll tonight after church. All right. <laughs> Trying to keep it a little light here. All right. Um, where, where's that at? For, for what? Okay. Yeah, look at this. <clears throat> now look at this. Because, and he, and he saith unto them, so this is what Jesus says to them. He says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. What a step of faith. What a demonstration of faith. They left their livelihood, their business, even their, for a period of time, their, their wives, their children, because, and why did they, why did they leave everything to follow Jesus because he had promised he would make them a what? He promised them, I will make you a fisher of men. Fishers of men. And, and of course, uh, that uh, they would, uh, they, the, the, henceforth, thou shalt catch men. You talk about a demonstration of faith. They left everything because they believed the promise of Jesus Christ that if they followed him, he was going, the end result would be, they would be fishers of men. <laughs> uh, now, did God keep his word? Well, I, I don't know, you tell me. Peter, just not long after leaving his ship, Following Jesus preaches the gospel as recorded in, where's it, Acts chapter 2? And the invitation is given. And how many? How many uh, souls were caught? Was it about 3,000? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Look, here's the great lesson. God blesses faith. But to live by faith, you're not going to be able to see. You're just going to have to trust. Finally, finally, salvation demonstrates faith. Salvation demonstrates faith. Um, do you really understand what... <laughs> What a person attempting to keep the, most, the, the uh, Ten Commandments is, is really demonstrating. A person that is attempting to attain heaven by keeping the Ten Commandments is demonstrating trust in self. That is a demonstration of trust in self. Um, think about it. 
But um, salvation demonstrates faith because true Bible salvation is not trust in self-performance, but trust in, finish it class, in Jesus Christ. Salvation. Most of the population of the world is attempting to attain eternal life, whatever their rendition of eternal life is. For us, it's the Bible. It's eternal life with God in heaven by keeping laws, commandments. And all that proves is they're they're trusting in self-performance. And they're blowing it all over the place. And they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it because the Bible says um, sin is the transgression of the law. And how many have transgressed God's law? Well, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So how many have sinned? All have sinned. All have broken the law. Nobody's getting eternal life with God in heaven by the law because everybody has sinned. And that only leaves one other avenue for salvation, for eternal life with God in heaven. There's only one other avenue to go. And that means I'm going to have to shift my trust from self over to somebody else. Look at it. Here it is. And I'll close just a few verses. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. See, it's a demonstration of faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. That's the law, the Ten Commandments all the commandments of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, if somebody could get to heaven by works, why would they boast? Why would they boast? Because God says they would boast. And why would they boast? Because if they could get to heaven by keeping the commandments of God, the Ten Commandments, whatever, hundreds of other commandments, they would boast, they would say, look what I did. And, and this is proof positive that a person trying to get to heaven by keeping the law is relying or trusting in self. And that's why they would boast. It would be the performance of self if they could make it and then they'd brag about it. But they don't need to, they don't need to worry about it. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it because there is none righteous. There's not a righteous soul in the whole earth. Nobody has kept God's laws. We, we are guilty as charged uh, with the exception of one person. One person did keep every commandment of God. And he made it. His name is Jesus Christ. So, um, go to Galatians, just the book right before Ephesians, Galatians chapter 2, and <laughs> verse number 16, we're almost done. Galatians chapter 2 and verse number 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So, everybody listening to the message, the preaching of God's word at this time, it cannot be stated 
more plainly than that, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Justified means to be declared faultless, guiltless, or innocent. That does not happen by the law because we've all broken the law. But by the faith, there it is, of Jesus Christ. See, salvation is about trusting in Jesus who lived a sinless life. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the what? You see it there? By the faith of Christ. So at what point are we declared innocent, faultless, guiltless, or justified? The point at which we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Period. And that is the point at which God accepts a person and they are given eternal life with God in his heaven forever. And not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Why does God keep saying that? He keeps saying that over and over and over. Not just here in Galatians. You can find it in Romans. Uh, uh, why does he keep saying that? Because, because people keep trying to trust in themselves that they're going to keep the laws and the commandments of God. And God keeps telling them, all have sinned. Hello, you've all broken my commandments. You've all sinned. You're not getting to heaven by trusting in yourself to keep my commandments. God says there's only one way to heaven. Only one way to heaven. John 14, 6, help me out. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, help me out, but by me. There's only one way to heaven. And it's not the law. It's Jesus. And trusting, believing in him alone. Look at verse 21, Galatians 2 and verse 21. Even Paul says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. I tell you what, I don't know if there's anything that's more frustrating to God. Uh, someone who despite despite God's message of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ, who persists, who keeps trying to get to heaven by keeping God's laws. And what's frustrating to God about that is... They're not keeping God's laws. They've broken God's laws. They've sinned against God. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness, that's right standing with God, righteousness, to be right with God, if it come by the law, and Christ is dead in vain. He died for nothing. God sacrificed his only begotten son, and it was pointless. If righteousness come by the law, 
The fact that Jesus came all the way from heaven to earth, the fact that he died to pay for our sins proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that salvation is not by the law. It is by faith in Jesus Christ. And I'll close with uh, Galatians 3, 26. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by what? By faith. Faith in whom? In Christ Jesus. Per and there's a period there. Don't add to it. Period. Demonstrations of faith. Demonstrations of faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And faith without works is dead. O vain man. Um, and uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. Praying demonstrates that we have faith. Giving demonstrates that we have faith. Going demonstrates that we believe Jesus will make us to be fishers of men. I cannot make myself that. Only Jesus can make me that. That's a work of grace that only he can do. But I'm going to go and I'm going to answer God's call because God's promises are yea in Christ Jesus. And I believe God. Huh. And salvation is probably the greatest demonstration of faith. When I stop trusting in self to keep the commandments, which I've already broken, and get self totally out of the picture, and I turn in repentance and faith to trust in Jesus Christ alone for my salvation, which means I've done absolutely nothing for my salvation. He's done it all. And he deserves all the credit, all the glory, all the praise. And so instead of spending eternity boasting, look at me, I'll spend eternity worshiping and praising and adoring Jesus Christ forever and ever. Wow. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Lord, for these, uh, these timeless examples of faith being demonstrated. And uh, Lord, um, it, it really is all about faith. It's all about faith or not at all. Without faith, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just... Lord, taking you at your word, believing your promises. And because we, you know, I mean, the, the, the evidence that we believe is we, yeah, we step out by faith. And, uh, and yes, uh, yes, we, we pray because we believe that God hears and answers prayer. Yeah, we go. We go because we believe that you, you promised if we would follow you, you would make us to be fishers of men. Uh, um, you know, there's uh, giving. We give. We give because we, um, we understand, Lord, and we certainly, uh, we certainly have read tonight uh, your intended purpose for your tithe, how it's to be used to furnish for your work, your service. Um, and uh, we, see, um, we see your response to Abraham, who thousands of years ago uh, tithed 
to Jesus, who was right there before him, and how that you blessed, and how that you kept the devourer from destroying him. The thief, that's what the devourer is, he's a thief, he's a destroyer. And, um, and God, you, I mean, so uh, I pray you'd bless your word, use our, your word however you will in our lives, and we'll be thankful for that. Uh, I, I, I just pray especially right now for anyone, anywhere viewing this gospel, <coughs> Bible message, who has never before accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, uh, that they would do so. They would do so while you're calling them, while you're drawing them to Christ. They would just, wherever they are, just pray, Lord Jesus, I, I admit I've sinned against God. I'm sorry. Uh, please come into my, my life. Please forgive me of all my sins. And if they would just pray, Lord Jesus, please save me. Please save me from hell. Uh, I want to spend forever with you in heaven. Please come into my life. Now, Father, uh, we, we, just, uh, we trust uh, your, your word, your gospel has gone forth. And you've promised your word would not return void. So we're going to leave the results with you. And go our way praising and thanking you this Lord's Day. For we ask it in Jesus' name.